today we're going to be building a mini chat GPT clone using the Ruby on Rails framework. The first thing we'll do is create a new Rails app. We'll call it mini chat GPT. We'll add Ruby open AI and .env Rails to our gem file and install those dependencies. Next, we'll go ahead and create a new controller. We'll name it chats. And in this controller, we'll just have an index route. This will be the root path for the application. Next, we'll implement the HTML and CSS for the application's layout. We're not gonna do anything too fancy here. We're just gonna define the title, a container for the conversation, and a form where the user can enter new prompts. Once we've got that set up, we'll go ahead and start our development server to show the layout we just created. The next thing we'll do is create another controller for streaming the responses from ChatGPT. This is gonna be a singular resource with only a show route. We'll go to OpenAI and create a new secret key. Once you've copied the new secret key, create a .m file at the root of your project to store the environment variable for the OpenAI access token. Make sure you update your git ignore so that your secrets aren't exposed in git. Let's implement the chat responses controller. The first thing we'll do is import the live module from the action controller namespace. This is gonna let us stream the chat GPT responses using server sent events. So we'll set up our show route and we'll set the content type header to text slash event stream. Then we'll want to set the last modified header. This is due to a bug introduced in rack version 2.2 that affected the streaming output. So we'll set up our SSE object, pass in the response stream, and pipe the chat GPT API response to an event we're arbitrarily calling message. We can go ahead and instantiate our open AI client providing our access token. Then we'll call the chat API tell it what model we're using, pass in the prompt, which we'll provide as a query parameter. Then we'll create a procedure to handle the incoming stream from the API. We'll get the content from the API response and write it to the message event. Once there's no more content, we'll return from this procedure. Finally, we'll close the connection. Okay, so next we'll create a stimulus controller. We'll call it chat. Then we'll go back to our markup and add some data attributes to connect to our stimulus controller. I'm gonna add a target to this section. This is where we're gonna display the conversation. Then I'm gonna add another target to this text area to get the user's prompt. When this form is submitted, we'll call the generate response action on the chat controller. So let's go ahead and add the prompt and conversation targets to our stimulus controller. We'll go ahead and define our generate response action Action. I don't want the page to reload when the form is submitted, so I'm gonna prevent default on this event. We're gonna manipulate the DOM a little bit to display our conversation. I'm gonna create a label to indicate that this is your message. And then we'll create the message itself, which in this case is gonna be the value on the prompt target. We could do a similar procedure for ChatGPT's responses, but when we create the message, I want to return the element because we're gonna be dynamically updating this element as we read from the stream, which for this, we'll set up a new event source connecting to our chat responses controller. We'll start listening to the message event. Anytime we get a message, we'll parse the JSON and append that message. We'll also go ahead and automatically scroll as the text is streaming in. So once the server closes the connection, we're gonna get an error event. We could check that the server did indeed close the connection. Then we can close the event source on the client. Then we'll go ahead and clear the text area for the next prompt. Finally, we'll implement the disconnect lifecycle method to ensure we don't leave an event source open. And with that folks, we have our chat GPT UI complete. Isn't it beautiful? If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out.